Hi, welcome back to Microsoft Build Live. My name's Amy Boyd, and I'm joined by Tulasi and Govinda from the Microsoft Q&A service team. Um, in this segment, we're going to be talking about how to create truly conversational bots um, using the Q&A Maker Cognitive Service. So um, thanks very much for coming, sure. guys, and, and welcome. Can you do a quick introduction about what it is you do at Microsoft? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Tulsi. Um, hi, Amy. Uh, I'm the product manager of Q&A Maker, which is the conversational cognitive service for in the language space. And hi, I'm Gurvinder Singh. I am a developer in Q&A Maker. Nice one. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Um, Tassi, can you tell us, can you like level set us all a little bit and tell us a bit about Q&A Maker? Sure. So Q&A Maker is actually, we just had a session about this just a little while ago. Q&A Maker is a, an Azure cognitive service in the conversational AI space. And it helps you to easily create a conversational layer over any data that you have. So it can be you know, an FAQ page, a support website, um, a PDF. And it extracts questions and answers and makes a conversational uh, model out of that. And you can easily make that a bot. So the great thing about Q&A Maker is that you don't need developer expertise or AI expertise to create a bot. And we're going to show you that. I'm so excited to show you that demo. And, the, and even better is that you can add personality to it. So yeah. Oh, very cool. We all like a bot with a personality. Yeah. <laughs> um, if people have questions online, please go to aka.ms Microsoft Build Live and ask us some questions. You can ask anything to these guys, um, and they'd be more than happy to answer. But while we're waiting for some questions to come in, I think we have a demo, right? Yeah. You guys want to show us what, how, how we create all a Q&A maker service? Yes, let's do that. So Gurvinder here will, have, will show us, walk us through a quick demo and show you how easy it is. So if you haven't used Q&A maker yet, you should. Yeah, thanks, Tulsi. So uh, for this demo, I'll take Surface Pro uh, user guide. So uh, Surface Pro user guide is basically semi-structured data, and it has headings, subheadings, which is quite suitable, uh, which can very easily generate question answer uh, documents. So we'll go to knmaker.ai, and we'll start by creating a knowledge base. So first thing that uh, you should have a QA Maker resource in Azure. So I already have one, so I'll skip that process. So uh, you need to select your Azure account in this dropdown. And then you can uh, specify some name for your KB. I'll select Surface Pro Demo. And uh, in next step, you need to provide your data source. So we already, I already showed you that uh, Surface Pro uh, PDF, so I'm linking that. And uh, the cool thing about q and Maker is you can add personality to it. So I'm adding friendly personality. And then I'll say create. So in uh, background, uh, it, it extracts data from the source. And it puts those data into the index. So uh, create usually takes a couple of minutes. So I already created a KB for you. So you can see that uh, in this KB, there are 171 QA pairs which are extracted. And uh, in this view, you can modify, you can add, you can delete QA pairs. Uh, QA Maker also allows you to test your KB before publishing into the prod environment. So let's go ahead and test it out. So I'll ask, hi. So the bot replied, and I'll ask uh, how to set up. Surface Pro. So bot replied with the, the answer that how can I set up Surface Pro. So I'll say, um, I, can ch I can chat with the bot. I'll reply, you are awesome. So uh, since it was a friendly personality, the bot replied with a friendly behavior. So now I am quite confident that my KB looks good. So I'll go ahead and publish it. So I'll close the test pane, and I'll go to the Publish tab, and I'll publish the KB. So now my KB is published in prod environment. Now we recently introduced a new feature where you can just create, uh, where you can just connect your bot, uh, where you can just deploy it to Azure Bot Service. So I'll click on Create Bot. 
So it will redirect me to a portal Azure where all uh, in the in the pane all my data will be pre-filled so that I can deploy a bot easily. So it usually takes a minute. Yeah. So you can see my all the data is pre-filled. My QNA Maker account is linked. So I don't need to add anything. I'll just hit create. So I've already created a demo bot for you. So uh, we'll go try out uh, in the web chat. So it's still loading. So is this similar to the test yeah. you were doing in the sort of like, oh, is it a friendly personality? Yeah. Is it that? And then that's just basically. So I'll try out board. similar queries here. Hi. And except that this is actually published to a bot. Right. So rather than it being in the QA Maker UI, this one is actually live. Yeah, this one is in an actual a bot, bot where you can publish it. So yeah, let's uh, try that out. Yeah. How can I set up Active Screen? So if we knit back to Govinda's screen, have we got an answer now from that yeah. test? So it gave me the example. And now uh, so I have shown you that uh, Without any code, I've created a bot out of it. And now we can deploy it in uh, bot framework provides many channels. So you can deploy it in Cortana, you can deploy in Teams, Skype, et cetera. Cool. And so you can see that you know, to do all of this, you didn't have to write, he didn't have to write a single piece of code. He yes. did a single line, right? And you can take it directly all the way to Teams, to Google even now with the new channels. Yeah. Uh, and that's the magic of QA Maker with bot framework and bot service. Nice. So, so what we saw there was we went to Q&A Maker.ai. Yeah. We created a bot. We uploaded quite a complex PDF. It wasn't a very simple PDF, right? It had headings and formatting and pictures. We then went on to publish that. So we have an API endpoint because you don't. Do you have to have the bot? Like, is that? Oh, no, you don't have to. You can use the API endpoint in any application. Yeah. Right. So like any other cognitive service, it's a simple call yeah. REST request. Nice. And then we were able to actually test that within the Azure portal. Yes. That right? Nice. So that's a full end to end. Yes. And we haven't opened. I mean, we'd yeah. love to open Visual Studio Code, right? <laughs> but we didn't have to. Didn't have to. So that was yeah. a win. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. And so um, it's a nice bot, right? And, and we ask it a question and, and we get something back. What if I wanted a bit more complexity? What if I wanted to have a bit more back and forth conversation? Um, can, I, can I guide a user? Can I? Yeah. Actually, this is a great question because we just announced a brand new feature at Build today. And we just had a session that announced this, where you can create multi-turn guided conversational flows using QNA Maker. In fact, the, I think the document that uh, Gurvinder already did yeah. has that. So maybe we can see that first. Yeah, I'll show you one scenario in the document. So uh, in this view, you can see that uh, in accounts and signing section, we have multiple uh, queries which you can ask. Maybe uh, use sign in in screen, Windows hello to sign in, or sign out. So uh, in, the, in the heading, you can have different subheadings, which can be treated as a different context. So I'll try this, that out in QNA Maker. So already with the data that we have already, uh, the data that we already have, I'll show you that uh, in the first column, there is a context tree. So you can see that accounts, the uh, main, pa uh, the parent is accounts and sign in, and they have three children. And similarly, in answer column, you can see the answers and the prompt, which are the follow up questions which you can ask. So let's try and test pin. Uh, enable. Enable multi -tool. And you need to make sure you enable multi-turn. Guru. So I asked, it gave me three answers. It gave me the answer and three follow-up questions. What I could ask next. So let's say if I want to use a sign-in screen. So I asked and it answered me. That's, uh, that's yeah. really nice. I guess the kind of, <laughs> you don't know what you don't know as an end yeah. user. Like, yeah. I don't know, if I ask, um, 
I don't know, my electric bill company or whatever, I, you know, I'm like, oh, I want to do this. But then they're like, well, actually, did you know there's this offer that you can take or there's something like you can, I guess, start guiding people through the, it, floor, yeah. the real process of, yeah. of how you want them to kind of move through the system as well. That's, that's nice. It's very, very cool. And um, what, what is this called if we wanted to search for that kind of yeah. thing? You can just search for documentation on q and Maker Multiton. Um, it's a public preview that we just announced. So Multiton Conversations. Nice. Very good. Yeah. And you had a session earlier today. Was that on that content? Was, yeah, it was. It included so, this as well as language, but yeah. Very nice. So if people want to go and kind of figure out a little bit more, go a little bit deeper, um, they're going to be able to catch up with that online yeah. later. Very nice. OK. Um, so right. if you do have any questions, please, as I said, feel free to go to aka.ms slash Microsoft Build Live. Do ask your questions to the Q&A Maker team. Uh, they've been working very hard on these demos and would love to answer some of them. So um, we were chatting, obviously, just before this. And I said, um, I often say to anyone who's building like machine learning algorithms, I'm like, oh, they're not, you know, you don't just build it and then it just sits there. Like you, It's like a living thing. You kind of have to look after it and update it over time. And, we always want it to get more intelligent. Can, can we do that with, with Q&A Maker? Can we, can we provide it more information and, and you know, right. can it help us do that? And this is a great point. Right? With every machine learning um, model, like you said, as well as a bot, you want it to keep learning with time. And that feature we call in Q&A Maker, as well as in other cognitive services like language understanding, we call it active learning. Uh, we released this in, a couple of months ago. We have some improvements. But basically, we allow, based on, the, based on how users are chatting with the bot itself, we will give feedback. And then you, as a developer, can choose whether or not to add new suggestions and improve your model. So you're still completely in control, okay. but q and Maker will make suggestions for you because it knows what you know, users are asking. Uh, so let's actually try that. I think yeah. we have that in this. We have, a, we have another demo. Nice. Yeah. I mean, it we brings it that. to life, right? <laughs> <laughs> OK. So this is so the this same is the demo, same, right? Yeah. This cool. is the same knowledge base you saw earlier with the Windows Surface. And um, you'll see that you, know, uh, you now have a new option called there's active learning. So there's show active learning. And you can filter by the suggestions. So this shows you only the suggestions. So maybe you can talk about an example. Right? So this is it, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, uh, you can see here, uh, it, it gave me one more suggestion. How can I sign in? So it is based on user's data, what user queried in the context of this question. Yeah. So, yeah. so we can keep, keep seeing the suggestions. Now, as a developer, I can choose whether to add it, reject okay. it, and keep improving it with time. So okay. super simple, and it keeps evolving. How does it like bubble its way up almost? Is that, is that something that happens behind the scenes? Yes. Is it depending yeah. on how many people? Exactly. Yeah, so answers. there's pieces of both. So either implicitly the model knows what the model doesn't know, you know? Okay. Because the model knows that this one I know a good answer for, this one I know there's no good answer. This stuff I'm not sure about. So we keep storing that and then trying to use some, again, machine learning concepts in the back end to cluster that and give the most relevant suggestions. Okay. You can also use this to get direct feedback from users. So if a user says, I saw some options, I think this is the best answer, uh, you can also use that to feedback. Oh, no. yeah. yeah, no, so I was going to say, because obviously you, we sort of have to tell it normally. It's like, exactly. oh, yeah, no, that is the right thing. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. A bit of both, yeah. Okay, cool. And um, how about like maintenance of the system? Is there ways that we can, I guess that becomes as part of the active learning, does it, in the sense that, you know, if there's lots of duplicates or if there's like, it's, it's not quite answering the question how I would right. if I was a human. Can we provide that in that yes. knowledge base, is it? So um, along with active learning, when we are providing suggestions, we also regularly do cleanup so that we're not just, yeah, we're not just showing the same number of suggestions all the time. So it is being maintained at all times. Nice. And yeah, and since you want to talk, we can even talk a little bit about personality because I think the interesting thing is um, we have a session on Wednesday talking about personality stuff right um, on at 11 and so in this case you saw personality uh, coming through with chit chat right so we showed an example where he said you know the friendly persona so we have three right now that are in public uh, but we just announced two more you'll see it starting tomorrow um, so we have professional friendly witty uh -huh. and 
the new ones are caring and enthusiastic, which is, <laughs> sounds so caring. And I mean, you enthusiastic can sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can choose the one that's most suited for your bot uh, based on the scenario. Like if you are, you know, if you're at, if you're in a hospital or a caring type of situation, you might choose the caring one. Right. The caregiver kind of bot. Uh, if you are just a fun bot, you might want something friendly or witty even. Yeah. Uh, the witty bot is always fun. <laughs> Very nice. And so have you seen different companies kind of using yeah. these different personalities? But I'm assuming depending on the brand. Exactly. Right? Like, you know, you, you give off a bit of a flavor, don't you, by, your, by yeah. your brand and stuff. And that was part of that setup scenario. Exactly. Right? So it's already, it's super easy. All you need to do is just select it and it comes automatically for you. So yeah, very, very nice. I see. And um, there's some set questions. Wanna? Oh, yeah. Oh, great stuff. We have some questions. Thank you. Thanks for sending in some questions. Um, we have Naveen. So um, can you add multiple docs to the knowledge base and will it search across different docs? I was literally about to ask a similar nice. thing about <laughs> document types as well. Um, so yeah, mul multiple docs, or searching across all these docs, can you do that? Yeah, you can add, we can add as many docs as you want. We have like a very large limit. Uh, we can add PDFs, uh, doc files, Excel. Yes, yeah. And it's the bot and the knowledge base. So the ranking model will search across all of those and find the best possible yeah. answer. It does it automatically for you, so you don't have to worry about separating them separately. But yeah, very Good nice. Question. Yeah. And um, we have we have one more question on there as well. Um, can the bot be once it's deployed? Can it be deployed into native apps, mobile apps, web apps, or does it have to always use the API? I guess. Is yeah. the API the, the basis and then, you know, use you those use packages yeah. in all of those different apps? Is right. So we have the API. We also have an SDK available. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we do have the SDK available in most uh, primary languages. And those we keep improving with time. The API is always the, the latest and greatest. Uh, but we also have SDKs. We have our um, just the QNA Maker SDK as well as the Bot Framework SDK, which is a more tightly coupled version of what's uh, available with the Bot Framework. Oh, nice. So that's kind of like integrated okay. into it, is it? Yeah. Very, very good. And uh, one more, because I think we have, a, we have about 30 seconds left. Um, <laughs> what have we got there? From Ronald, uh, are there any automated testing methods? So is there any way we can test what, what the bot says? That's a good point. So today, um, we don't do, we, we're thinking about in introducing something like batch testing. Today, you actually do manual testing only. Um, and then you have App Insights. So Application Insights is the way you can check what people say in the logs. And then you can see what the bot's responding to that. So that would be the, the easiest way to do that today. But OK. Well, I, I think we're up on time. Um, okay. So thank you very much for joining us, um, Tassi and Govinda. And I uh, hope you had the rest, a great rest of build. Yeah. Thanks, um, Amy. <laughs> Thanks very much, everyone. Uh, this has been a Q&A maker on Microsoft Build Live. <laughs>